part four of our journey from Chester to Denby at Hope Exchange Station. As we saw in the last part, the site was inaccessible, and so heading west, we'll make our way to Paidswood and Buckley, the next station. So luckily, the footpath takes us onto the track bed. Hope exchange that way and very gloopy. Up there, sitting on its hill like a Motten Bailey castle, is something that's quite majestic but also ugly at the same time. That's Panifoth Cement Works. It's very imposing, isn't it? So, let's head west and see what there is to see on the track bed. And straight away, I think we've got what looks like an remains of an occupation crossing here. So we've got a big, it's a crossing today, but we've got the big concrete post here. And we've also got one that side. Let's get the other side so I can get a better view. Oh, straight in the gloopler. Uh, once more into the gloop. Right. So there we have, you can see our post, still got the bracket on uh, the, for the, uh, the gate. And I'm assuming there would have been one that side. So that's a pretty decent find. And it, that also looks very much like a sleeper. So on to the trap bed to see what we can find. So this clearing area, and I've noticed you've got quite a bit of ballast now. It seems to have, you can hear me st uh, stomping it. Look, there's quite a bit of ballast there mixed in with all the fallen leaves. And you can hear me as I walk on it. A hell of a lot of ballast. Where was that when I needed it when it was gloop as hell? So it appears that we may be coming to the end of um, a little bit of a fence in our way. Look at that lovely fence post up there. That's going to be some age. So it would seem we've come to the end of this particular piece of track bed. It carries on. So we've got, ah, right. So we've got our footpath again going from left to right. Ah, now look at this. Is that a plate layer's hat? I wonder if we'll ever find out. Okay, so which way? I think, I know the main road is that way. And it's just occurred to me this could actually be an old um, occupation crossing. Obviously it's been modernized for the footpath. Now the footpath goes that way. And this one, I think I know what I'm gonna come across. And it's not gonna be good. It's, uh, Let's head around here and I think this proves that this was an old occupation crossing. We've got our concrete fence post. Let's get out into a, a bit more light. So there we go. So we've got our concrete fence posts. And was that up there that we passed earlier, is that the original gate? Potentially. So I found another footpath heading west. I think I'm on the footpath. Signs are very vague. There's our track bed there that I was looking this way from the footpath that crossed it just a minute ago. We've got a bit of an opening here. So I'm gonna have a quick look in. I'm not gonna, you know, pry too much. We've got our concrete posts either side. You know, and I've just seen something over here. So there's that. Well, I thought, or I think, is a plate layer's hut or some sort of a shelter. But up here, 
we've got a fence barring our way but sticking up vertically rather oddly is quite clearly a sleeper now what was that before so I've taken a decision to come off the fields and onto the track bed I know I'm not supposed to be here but the problem is I've followed the footpaths as best I can and the signage is totally inadequate I got to that corner over there blocked that corner over there no more signage don't know where to go and I don't know how to get out other than walking a good couple of miles back again so I've come on to somewhere I know the track bed so that way is Hope Exchange, you can see the cement works just there and I'm going to take the track bed west towards Pageswood, see what I can find. And straight away I've seen something, possibly the best thing I've come across so far. And it was completely hidden by the trees. So let's just get round this one and it might come into view, there it is, we've got a lovely brick building there look, or the remains of one. You've got quite a bit of ballast underfoot. So I'll have a look at this. That's pretty decent, isn't it? I would imagine it was a a plate layers hut of some description. Or a P-way hut, that sort of thing. Not very big. Sometimes you see them with a fireplace, this one hasn't. But it had a window. So that's a, that's a pretty decent, come on, fine that is. Right, so back out onto our track bed. Let's see what else there is to see. So I'm very, at least I think I am, very close to the site of Pageswood and Buckley Station now. I'm just off the track bed, but look, I'm back on a footpath again. So at least I'm in the right area. And look at this. We have is that stone? No, oh, that's wood. That is a sleeper. Look, there's a trap chair hold. That's a sleeper. And there's another one. In fact, I've just seen the, the whole fence seems to be made. Let's just climb over this stile. And the fence, so we're back on the track bed now. Pageswood and Buckley, can only be a few hundred yards that way. The fence here, look, it's made of sleepers. So believe it or not, I am on a footpath, I think. I'm also on the former track bed, I think. It's now a, a stone yard of some description. Anyway, our line comes from over there. And this, once again, I think, because it's totally unrecognizable, is the site of Frith Junction or thereabouts. Now the junction itself, which would have taken trains to Frith and uh, Code Talon would have come from the same direction. Uh, it wasn't a triangle, so just a one line coming round, and it would have come round in a curve to my right here. This embankment, I believe, is the railway embankment, and it would have, there's only a short area of it, and then it gets broken up and then reappears a few hundred yards down that way. You'd have had sidings here as well as the lines uh, opened up to arrive at Pageswood and Buckley Station but today it's totally unrecognisable and I'll double check with the maps to see if I'm right but I'm pretty sure I am that this I think I'm pretty certain is the area of Frith Junction. Turning to the National Library of Scotland you can see the modern overhead view of the site of Frith Junction. Now I was standing approximately here and let's add the main line and the line heading south from the junction. And you can see I wasn't too far out, although the line did 
curve away where I said the actual junction site is a few yards away to the east. If I impose the 1912 map, it shows that it was actually quite a busy scene with the siding into Providence Ironwork and also other lines heading into what I believe were gravel pits. The line to Kurd Talon was very short lived as by the time passenger services on the Chester, Mould and Denby line had ceased in 1962, it had already been closed for some 28 years after an accident caused its closure in 1934. Take a look at this. Now at first glance it looks like a basic map, which is technically true. Now let's turn it so that north faces up. Well, this is actually a Mould Railway Company conveyancing map, depicting the land which they intended to purchase to build Padeswood and Buckley Station and its environs. Let me add the 1912 map, and that will show you the yet-to-be-built station and where it fits in. If we then turn it to the reverse, it clearly states the company's intention to convey 14 acres, two roads and 37 and a half perches of land in the parish of Mould in the county of Flint. While in the top right, you can see a date of the 25th of October, 1848, nearly two years before the station actually opened. This wonderful document came to light when I got chatting to a lady called Kath, one of the railway cottage owners at Padeswood and Buckley, and my grateful thanks go to her for her assistance. Well, I've come away from the track bed, and I'm now, what, a few hundred yards west of Frith Junction on the aptly named Station Lane. These buildings that you see to my right, they're the remaining railway cottages that used to adorn the downside of Padeswood and Buckley Station and they're now what private homes. This one closest to me was once the station master's house. In front of me is the former bridge that would have gone over the railway line. Now as with everything else around here completely eradicated from existence. If you look over the fence towards Padeswood Golf Course this is looking west and there's absolutely nothing to see that would associate a railway and even looking east once again there's nothing to suggest that a railway would have been here other than as i mentioned before these wonderful buildings the station master's house and the staff cottages our station was down there it was a good 15 to 20 feet in a cutting, which was filled in, I think, quite soon after the last freight in 83. So you'd have had our down platform probably around this area here approximately, and our up platform around here. The stone bridge which I'm standing on, well, would have been standing on, has completely gone. It was got rid of not too long ago, about 10 years ago. Although filled in, the bridge over the line was demolished in the early 2000s. During demolition, Kath, the same lady who showed me the conveyancing notice, had taken some photos of the demolition, which revealed the original bridge before its destruction. This one clearly shows the abutments on either side, while here you can also see the top of the arch. A notable feature about Padeswood and Buckley is the station facilities that were here. And they were positioned on top of the bridge here. It was unique to this line. So our booking office and all the staff facilities were positioned on a quite a large building which would have been situated right here, sitting out over the railway line. This undated photo, once more supplied by Kath, shows the station buildings which likely housed the booking office and toilets, etc. The station opened in 1850 as simply Padeswood, with Buckley being added in 1894. Here, in this photo, you can see the station as it was in 1926, with the surviving houses fully visible behind. Padeswood and Buckley closed to freight in 1956 with passenger trains ceasing 
just two years later, despite them continuing on the line until 1962. The stretch of trackbed between Padeswood and Buckley and the next station, Flong, afforded no access, although with less than a mile between the two and flat country, it's unlikely to have yielded much of interest anyway. Therefore, I'll pick up the Explore at Hlong Station. So it's just come off the main road, only a few yards, and I'm coming up to our next station stop, and that is Hlong. And you can see the station house and the station itself right there, and we even have proper level crossing gates there and there. These ones, I think, were installed in the 1970s. And there we have our track bed going east. Opened with the line in August 1849 by the Mould Railway Company, Hlong had two platforms. The main station buildings are still extant and a private dwelling, while the platforms also still exist, albeit buried. The station first closed in 1917 as an economy measure during the First World War, reopening two years later. Sidings existed at Hlong, located next to the road as shown on the map, but were removed in the 1930s. With the cessation of passenger working and with no freight facilities, the station closed completely in April 1962. Despite closure, Hlong saw regular through goods trains right up to 1983. Just a few feet from the main road, you can see it just there, we have the River Allen and it runs along our railway line. You can see some concrete fence posts over there. But here, it turns underneath the railway line and we've got the remains of this wonderful bridge. The deck is obviously missing, but we got some sleepers acting as former fence posts. And then we've got these wonderful stone abutments. And that's a pretty decent find. So continuing west from that lovely bridge, you can see our track bed on the raised embankment there. And we're almost on the outskirts of mould. And that's where things are gonna get a little busier. So I've managed to get around the west side of that embankment. You can see all the ballast and you can see the, the embankment heading east towards Klong. Now I haven't looked at the maps of this area, but I'm assuming because you've got the track bed level here and the road level, this was a level crossing here. So let's cross over and see what we can see on the other side. Well, it's quite a busy road this. So what have we got? Well, we got our River Allen and our track bed appears to be running that way. You can see a line of trees. So here's the other side of those trees. So this is our track bed here. There's a bit of a, a cut in it. I think there's probably a flood that's taken that out. And then as it extends west, you can see a lot of ballast again. So we're definitely on the track bed here, but how to get on it? Mm. Let's check that level crossing. Well, here is the modern view with the A541 running south to north in the middle. And if we use a map dated 1968, and the road is not even there. So clearly no level crossing and no A541. We've crossed over the 494, you can see it there, the really busy road. Um, we're on the eastern side of Mould now. So when we get up there on the track bed, we'll be heading on the final stretches towards Mould. But straight away, we've managed to access the track bed and straight away we found a cracking um, foot crossing. We've got the posts here, but we're even more remarkable, we've still got the wooden gate. And I was also wondering, I know it's only a foot crossing and not a road crossing, but would there have been a red roundel sat in the middle of that gate? 
Anyway, let's, uh, we've got an old sleeper there that's holding up a fence post. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, he's got a lovely concrete post, still with the latch and everything. So that's almost complete. So we walk up the embankment to the track bed and the first thing we see is lots and lots of ballast. Now remember this, this part of the line all the way from Hope Junction back there was still used up to 1983 and lifted a couple of years later. So straight away we've got a very pronounced embankment. We've got the fence there, the boundary fence. We've got our embankment. So it's easy wide enough for two tracks here. So let's continue heading west towards Mould Station and see what we can find. Now I've just spotted something in the in the trees there of a concrete construction. And it's definitely trackside because we're now running into a little cutting here. Now I think I've seen something similar. We've got the remains of a telegraph pole there as well, look. You just see it through a tree. I think those unfathomable grey boxes would have been mounted on there. Obviously it's been removed, you've got the bolt still there. I think that is what that would have been. So we're cutting, it's coming down now. A load of stonework there. Could that be anything to do with the railway? Probably not, probably just dumped here. So look at our cutting, it's, it's lowering now. And we've got some, ah, look at this, look at this. We have a concrete sleeper complete with track chairs. So there we go, definitely worth having a look through here. That's the first concrete sleeper I think I've found on the whole line. I'm almost at the end of this interesting stretch of track bed. Carry on, we've got a fence in front of us and then it goes into mould. But this is also the point of what was known as Trithin Junction. I think I've got the pronunciation right. So, coming from the east, our line crosses right in front of us and goes towards Mould and a line would have come from Mould coming east and it would have branched off here and gone off in that direction. Now do you remember the junction at uh, Frith uh, just east of Pageswood and Buckley Station? Well that joins up with the same line, it's like a circular line so it went round there and headed off towards Coed Talon and then eventually Wrexham. So coming off our track bed walk, we're now into mould itself. And the first thing we come across is Woodlands Road. And there used to be a level crossing here. Now there's no sign of it today, except possibly this concrete post. Could that have anything to do with it? I think there's a possibility. Anyway, our line, would have continued on this bit of grass here pretty much into the bush there and it would have carried on heading into mould that way and uh, now ahead of us the track bed has been heavily built upon by a housing estate and there's absolutely nothing to see there so what I'll do is I'll try and pick up the track bed a bit further on well, I've come into like a small park really we've got a cemetery over there our line would have headed into mould on the other side of these bushes so where these houses are, that's bang on the former track bed but it was about here, or I should say looking over there would have been a colliery called Bromfield Colliery and it was approximately in this area where a junction would have come off the main line and fed that colliery now if you look on the map and I'll show you the map it was like a pincer, the line would have gone off there and then Lines would have sprawled off to the left and sprawled off to the right 
and I've done that the wrong way around I know um, and you would have been like spider legs they would have been all over the place and then meeting in the middle I'll show you what I mean on the map a final look at the overhead view shows the southeast side of Mould and then adding the line's route as it heads northwest. It shows where I walked along and also the site of Woodlands Road level crossing. Tristan Junction was situated here with the line heading to Coed Talon, while the sidings reaching out to Bromfield Colliery sprawled out like this into where today is an industrial estate. Before we get into Mould Station, I don't know, I saw this, oh, it's clearly a gate. I think it's old enough, definitely, I mean you can see the gate there, it's on rusty hinges and a concrete post. Was that a crossing place to get across the railway line? I mean the line didn't start till the other side of that fence. I think it's got potential, another one for the maps. Anyway, onward to the station site. That's an interesting wall over there. I wonder if that was an original um, railway border wall. So leaving the footpath, we're now gonna pop through this gap in the wall because this is the site of the former Mould station. Now I'll just get to the middle area of this car park. So approximately where I'm walking now, here, the lines would have come out of where them bushes are. There's that housing estate behind us. And it would have led right up there into Tesco's car park, which you can see there. And over there, you'd have had a good shed. You'd have had a siding that way, which I'll have a look at the site of. You'd have had a cattle pen and even a signal box, approximately where the trolley shelter is and where the supermarket is today. That was the exact site of Mould Station.